freedom at midnight. Well, that's how it feels. Have license, we'll drive. In Jeddah, some women weren't going to wait for dawn. They were ready at one minute past the hour. What does it mean to you as a Saudi woman to be able to drive in your own country? Um, it means a lot. It means that today I'm an independent person. I, am, um, I can drive my kids to school. I can do the grocery. I can do the basic things that anyone could do. So it, re it feels really important. It's a moment in history. But some women who fought for this aren't behind the wheel, they're behind bars. There's a real sense of celebration here. The women I've been talking to are excited. They know that other women who campaigned for this are in prison. But you can't take this night away from them. And they head off to the highway. rush hour in Jeddah this morning. Safana Dahlan was one of the first female lawyers in the country. Now she's one of the first female drivers. I mean, some of the guys are making jokes and saying, oh, there's going to be so many accidents yes. and so on. What do you think? I mean, they've said a lot. <laughs> but to be honest with you, uh, they can say whatever they want. Yeah. The fact is that we're driving. Yep. <laughs> 28 years since the first Saudi women's driving protest. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman may have now decreed that women should drive, but he's locked up the women campaigners so other protesters don't get ideas. These women took a mission on behalf of many Saudi women. They adopted these, the mission to voice out um, what we wanted, even if we didn't necessarily say it and I think and I would like to thank them for that even though I don't necessarily agree uh, completely with the way they've done it but it doesn't mean that we are not grateful to all of them demand exceeds the supply of instructors so there are other ways to get a sense of what it's like to drive ride hailing services have already made Saudi women's lives easier but now, when Enam al Aswad has her licence, she plans to work for one of them. Do you think Saudi men are ready to be driven by a female taxi driver? I think they are kind of ready because they will better us that women they will drive, women they will do this. And there is a lot of sector now women they work with, mm -hmm. like uh, military, like uh, hospital. If, uh, uh, even the transportation women, they never work in this sector, now they do. They will get used to it. But as a divorcee, she still needs the permission of her adult son to travel. I would like to go and uh, renew my password alone, going out alone, no need for permission. I think this is the next step, it's going to happen. Yeah. So driving is just the first step? Yes. But it's good to be a huge step. Learning about gearboxes and engines looks practical, not political. Yet Saudi women know while they can now drive, they still can't speak. Not if they want to campaign for more rights, demand change through democracy, not royal decree. Maybe when little girls in Saudi Arabia see their mothers taking on new roles, they'll be emboldened and not let men get in their way. Well, Lindsay, this is getting Saudi Arabia some good PR, and they've let in foreign journalists to see it, but what sort of rights are women still denied that men have, and how open to scrutiny is the Saudi government? Well, it is very good public relations, and certainly the Saudi government is making the most of that. They know how anachronistic this was, not letting women drive. Women I've been speaking to say, look, things have changed. They now automatically get custody of children if they divorce. And although the guardianship laws, the thing that says you must get permission from your you know, father or whoever to travel is still there, they have been eased. But I think the most important thing is to understand how this is happening. And it's not by democratization. Maybe the model is China, that you can have modernization, but that doesn't mean that you in any way have people power. Because the Crown Prince, who's only 32, 
he knows that the majority of people in this country, they're young like him, and they want modernization, they want change. He also knows that they can't rely on oil. One of the reasons that he wants women to drive is purely economic. It made no sense economically for women to have to employ drivers in order to get to work, because increasingly they're an important part of the workforce. So that's what's driving this country. But the Crown Prince is clear. He's the decider. He's in charge. He's balancing the conservative forces, the forces that want more change quickly, and anybody who goes against him, they're in trouble. He'll make the decisions driving this country into the future.